Hello everyone, this is Marsman here, and welcome to Marsman Gaming. Today, me and the Marsman crew are going to discuss Halo Infinite and what the future brings for this gaming franchise. If you like this video, please drop a thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Please join us on social media on both Twitter and on Discord, which are located in the description below. If you want to be a part of the Marsman crew, join us on Patreon. Any Marsman crew member can submit highlights to us, which can be added to future highlight tapes that I post every single month. Thank you for watching, now to the video. What's up everyone? This is Marsman here and welcome to Marsman Gaming. Today we got a special one for you. Me and the rest of the Marsman crew are going to talk about Halo Infinite in its current state and also what it holds in the future. So firstly, I want to welcome the Marsman crew to the show. I mean, I think everyone here has seen us in some way, shape or form on the highlight videos I've been posting. But to my left, we have Haki. Hey guys. And to my right is Langella Kill 75 What's up everybody? So, officially, guys, the game has been out for around a month. I mean, it's a little bit over the month now. And honestly, the game's popularity has definitely skyrocketed. But we all kind of do see the fact that a lot of people have some criticisms. And, and they have been fair. But generally, for the most part, it's been pretty positive. Um, all I got to say right now is that we played this game a lot. I mean, we played hours of this uh, every, almost every day, definitely on the weekends. And... You know, generally, I feel like we have a positive outlook of it, but we do have a lot to say. And we've been playing this game since what we were. I, I was seven years old when I started playing. I don't know about you guys, but Halo. you guys are a little older than me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys played when when I played when I was over at your house. That was the first time. So you guys put me on the Halo, no doubt. Yeah, all the Halos, one, two, three, Reach, ODST, um, some of the Halo Wars. Yeah, um, and then obviously the new the the. 343 series so a lot of halo yeah man i feel like halo is kind of embedded in our blood and and for me i felt like it was my first console game other than the the n64 so you know it holds a, a, a spot i think in all of our hearts so i think this game is a pretty big deal um but i already had a very long and in-depth review of halo infinite yeah. and you should definitely check that out in the description below but Today, we're going to have a nice little roundtable discussion, firstly, to discuss the current game in both the campaign aspect and the multiplayer, and then we're going to go into what we'd like to see in the future in the multiplayer and campaign, and we'll have a nice little, nice little discussion here. So to kind of get us started today, I want to talk about the campaign, and uh, I want to get your uh, both of your ideas about it. The general question here is, what do you guys think about the direction? And uh, if you, there were some things you could change or things that you would like to see that they didn't have, what would it be? And I'll start with Haki first. Yeah, awesome. So, um, I mean, this is Halo's first open world um, campaign. And um, at first, I didn't really know if it was going to be um, that great, you know, uh, but it really did. Uh, they really did do an amazing job. Um it does have the open world, the, the feel, everything when, you know, you get dropped off from grappling everywhere to driving around the map. Um, it really does have a, a great feeling. The weapons and everything are, are fantastic shooting. Um, and it still does have that core um, Halo, like linear feeling as well. When you go and you, you know, the, you fight your bosses and everything like that. Um, uh, it does still have that core Halo feel. So I, I just think um, they did such a great job uh, with the campaign. Um, some people were thinking that it was a little too uh, short uh, with all the side missions, everything you had to go do, you know, uh, capture all the fobs, uh, get all the armor lockers. Um, I didn't sit in for 15 hours and play it straight. You know, I kind of I was playing multiplayer. I was I was doing a bunch of other stuff. So um, I thought it was long enough. And, you know, knowing that they're going to be adding things was um, was was a, in the back of my mind the whole time. You know, so I, I thought the campaign. Uh, like I said, it was was a, a, a great, uh, great beginning to to the Halo Infinite saga, what we can call it. Yeah, go ahead, Frank. What do you, what do you think? I, I can bounce right, you know, off of that. And uh, there's a lot of points that I agree with about the open world aspect. Obviously, open world is is kind of a huge flavor for a lot of gamers nowadays. And it's, um, you know, there's different ways you can go about it. You can go to the multiple multiple hours like the witcher and stuff like that where you're just playing skyrim for hours on hours on hours or you can get a little bit more it's the open world but have a little bit of linear effects um like ghost of toshima 
um, you know, and stuff like that. And I think Halo did a pretty good job of, you know, sticking in between those, right? So um, I think they were closer to Ghost of Toshima than obviously games like The Witcher. Um, but I thought they did a pretty good job. And to me, I feel like you kind of opened the, the can of worms in the Halo series. I don't think you can go back um, mm-hmm. to being a linear game. I feel like this is kind of where you have to go as if you're, pl- if you're planning on being on a, a Halo ring or on an alien, uh, you know, we'll talk about the direction in the future, but if, you know, that's the direction you want to go, I think you have to stay in this, this realm now because um, they did such a good job of it. They have to, I think, continue that. Um, that's just kind of the overall feel. Like you mentioned, the gameplay, the gameplay felt a lot more like Halo than, than the previous uh, 343 games. And that to me was an extremely important one, probably the most important um, we'll talk about, I, I would imagine we're going to get into the story and the characters yeah. of the campaign, but the gameplay was huge that they needed to hit on. And I thought they did hit on it um, as well as 343 has done it. it. It felt much more like Reach, felt much more like Halo 3, um, which they needed to get back to because 5 was getting into a completely different realm. 4 was itching their way towards it. 5 went completely off the rails uh, with what used to be. And some people like 5. I'm not a fan of of the gameplay of five. Um, mm-hmm. So I was happy that they went back to it for the gameplay wise. Hookshot was a huge addition. Um, it allowed you to explore things that, you know, you, you never would have in, in Halo before. So th- those were good. I like that they allowed you to, to reach different heights, go to different areas. There weren't the invisible walls um, that, that kind of hurt people. So that's the good stuff uh, for sure for this campaign. Yeah. So I, I kind of had a general sense of, the same feeling where it was the open world aspect was really cool. I thought them having that for the first time was so impressive. And, and a lot of people were nervous about it. I was kind of nervous too, but they did it such a good way. And like, like you said, Angela Kill, that you have to kind of do that from now on because you can't just like get rid of it. It was such a good idea and it, it was smooth. I think that was kind of a key thing that we all kind of agree on here, but the kind of build off of what you were saying that about the story and i kind of want to ask everyone it just kind of this goes along with direction about you know what we saw about the direction i think i should even add a little component there direction of the story in the plot what was just a general thing that you guys you don't have to go through the whole story but like did you like the the idea they had about what they were saying because we all play just to give a, a warning you know obviously spoiler alert warning at this point but we've all played the game on legendary we all played the game with the highest difficulty and we all have known Halo for such a long time. So, story direction. What do you? What did you like? What did you did not like? So, Angelica, I'll you go first on this, and then we'll go. We're on. sticking with things we like first, right? And then we'll go yeah. to what we don't. So, things I like. Um, I love the introduction of the new villains, even though the majority of them got whacked yeah. off uh, by the end of it. Um, again, if you don't continue, if you don't want spoilers, but. I actually did enjoy the new villains. I like the banished. Um, they could be a little bit more clear on their objective and motives, but if you can kind of piece the audio logs along with uh, some of the cutscenes, you can kind of get a general feel of what they're trying to do. But I enjoyed it. I know there was big worry about who the villains were. And after five, I was really concerned about, you know, the state of, of villains for it. So I, I like the idea that, you know, chief was out, out on the ring We'll talk about things I didn't like, uh, but for the most part, I like Chief being the main component, which was another big thing. I'm not against, you know, and I don't blame 343 and 5, and I know it's kind of like fixing the sins of previous games. I don't dislike them trying to introduce new characters and introduce possibly main characters. They tried to do that at 5. They said it was a bad idea with all the feedback they got. Went right back to Chief. And Chief, obviously, he was well-written. He was really good. I loved his lines. I loved um, you know, it was like a more human type chief and, uh, you know, he was still a badass. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really like chief. I know people didn't like the, uh, pilot. I liked the pilot. I know he was kind of annoying and a little bit of a coward, but that's kind of the character that they were going with, right? Yep. Like that's what they made him out to be. And it worked. That's how you felt from him. So, um, and I liked the weapon. I, I liked the weapon as well. So, I thought the characters were good. I thought the story was fine. Um, there were things I would have done differently, um, but I think it was 343's best story. Um, I don't think it hits the Halo 1, 2, or 3. Um, you can argue reach. It doesn't touch those. It doesn't touch 1, and 2, and 3. Um, I think there's a pretty 
gap, big gap between those. But this was clearly 343's best written story, um, and they deserve credit for that. And I think it puts them kind of back on track, kind of trying to fix the sins of the previous installments that they made. Um, so the characters I like, the, the writing, for the most part, I like. Um, definitely some confusing parts we'll go into on the things I don't like, talking about Cortana. Um, but everything else I thought was pretty solid um, outside some things I would change. So Aki, what do you think? What do you what did you like and what did you not like? Yeah, yeah. So um and to the things that I liked, um, Frank uh, mentioned uh, the audio logs. I thought that was super, super interesting. Um, I wasn't able to find every single one. I, I'm definitely gonna go play uh the campaign over again to see if I can um you know gather uh, all of them. But again, the more audio logs you can get, the more the story is told. Um, and I, I thought that was a very interesting way to um, add on to the story while you're playing it, you know. Um, again, there there were doors that were left open in Halo 5 that I think that they were able to close some of those doors, uh, specifically talking about Cortana. But again, I, I love the weapon. Um, she was um, a very, uh, she was almost, um, uh, you know, like like innocent a little bit, you know, and, and mm. jokes and stuff, which I thought was very cool. And And she like showed us a side to chief that like, you don't always, that you never really saw, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, I definitely, and, but still chief was still, you know, like the, he was that dude, you know, he was, his lines brought you back. Like his lines brought yeah. me back 10 years, you know? And it was like, th this is, this is awesome. Um, so it was, I was very glad to see them bring the story um, together, even though it was a kind of a new arc, you know, um, Again, you know, the, the ending, which we'll get into um, uh, in, in a little bit, uh, was was good as well. And, and it kind of um, opens the door again for Halo Infant to continue with with the story that um, the, that they're doing right now, which, again, I, I think was was good. Again, the only the only um, uh, I would say the only hiccup might again be with Cortana. And it goes back to Halo 5, you know, but yeah, yeah. Were, we're in Halo Infinite now, so <laughs> we're both <laughs> Halo Infinite. And we're we're you know trucking along. So yeah, no, I yeah. I agree. Uh, so when I look at the positives, and like I said, I had a whole a giant review of the game, so I'm not gonna go take too much time here. But generally, I like the characters. I thought that the from the good point of view, Chief. This probably may, might be Chief's one of his best characters in all the games. Uh, I did like the weapon. I I liked uh, Echo Two Sixteen or Fernando Esparza for people who don't know. Um, he was kind of like a like more realistic character. Like he kind of represents us. If we were in that situation, like we just want to go home. We like, you know, that, that kind of feeling, but I did like the villains. I thought I really liked Eshram as a, as a, as an antagonist. I like some of the side bosses. Um, but the biggest issue that I did have was you just didn't get enough of them. You didn't get enough of the context of what their character arcs are, what are their motivations, who, what do they represent? And I thought that the beginning should have added a little bit more to the context situation. I understand having just us jump right into the conflict, which in a lot of cases is great, but sometimes you can have a little more like scene and then you say, all right, now let's go into the conflict. Imagine if you were playing that fight in the hangar and then all of a sudden Atriox shows up and just starts whipping you and he, have him be, and most games have this where you fight the final boss at the start of the game and you just get your butt whipped. Like that's happened. And imagine you played as chief and you fought Atriox and he just whipped you. And, and that's how like scenes, that's how that cut scene starts where he gets, you know, thrown out the hangar. Like imagine you played that and you were like, wow, this guy's a badass. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you would feel that and versus you seeing a cut scene of it. You're like, I never seen chief lose like that. But like, as you played that, you're like, I never lost like that. Imagine you would have felt more like connection to that, that beginning. But the, but yeah. So for, yeah, yeah gonna say I, I think part of the, the you know i mentioned before about opening a can of worms another part they open a can of worms is boss fights yeah and i love the introduction to boss fights um halo's had it before but they even in the great halo games of halo 2 um most of the time they're trash yeah right so the, the boss fights are usually trash in halo games this although there are wasn't perfect especially if you come in with the right gun combination you can kind of run through uh the bosses but um, if they catch you without the great uh, gun combination, um, they can give you issues. And I just thought they did a good job. Um, but like you mentioned, and we'll talk about things we don't like, 
I like the villains. I just want more of the villains. Like mm-hmm. I want to know more. I want to see them be more impactful before you come up and kill them. Yeah. Right. I mean, you could show, like you talked about, you know, the Ashram was talking about destroying the UNSC in four minutes. And you mentioned it in the review. We should have seen those four minutes, right? You yep. could have had that four minute introduction or have that part of the first mission of the game um, where you introduce all the main bad guys. Right. And then you could shoot six months later. Right. So like I, I, that's, you know, going to things that I didn't love and that it, I felt this campaign was good. Uh, I mentioned the good things like at the characters, the villains, um, the music is another one. Yeah. yeah. Halo five and Halo four really dropped the ball when it came to music. And I think Halo infinite got back to the roots of Halo, which is you need good music in moments throughout the game and they did a good job of doing that um so they deserve credit for um going back to some bungee roots uh which starts with the music and so those are definitely good things and obviously we're going to get to the things i wasn't a big fan of but uh yeah yeah so what so just to build that because me and me and hockey kind of mentioned some things we didn't like um i know i did just now but what do you would you not like about the story because then we'll jump into some of the other aspects that were a little like, on the, like the halo page. fans watching this i know you know I, I watch other reviews and mars did a really good job on his review um and i look at the act man and angry joe and all those big guys who who go into the halo stuff the elephant in the room is Cortana. Mm-hmm. i mean this is kind of goes back to the sin but this is three four three right so you kind of have to look back at the previous installments because this is the same group making the game now, different writers, right, they changed management um, because of the state that, that the game was in when they had to delay it. But I hated – Cortana probably should have stayed dead in four. If you look at it in hindsight, I really think they did not do her justice. They did a terrible job in five trying to make her the evil mastermind. And I think it just – this kind of felt like, if I make a reference to a movie, Star Wars – um, the new trilogy from the second installment to the final installment. You have two different directors, right? And they're trying to clean up each other's messes. Um, and so that's what I kind of felt with Cortana. Like they, they wanted to end the arc because they didn't think they could salvage it. So they tried to give her some redeeming thing at the end. But throughout the game, you were seeing some of the messed up stuff that she did. You didn't feel the impact of the messed up stuff she did, right? In five, they just told you she was a bad guy, right? And she was preparing to be an evil mastermind. Mm -hmm. And then right from Infinite, she did all the bad deeds already, right? So we skipped right to the part at the end where she did all the bad stuff, right? Destroying the Spartan uh, training facility, right? Going into a stalemate with Earth, destroying the Banish's home planet. Like, this is stuff that they just showed you really quick. You didn't feel any of that impact. And then at the end, when she loses, right, where Atriox beat her, right, beat the UNSC and beat Cortana, then she goes through this kind of half-assed uh, redemption. And it just it just did not land well. Like, yeah. it just did not land well at all. And I listen, it just... It's sad, but the Cortana arc, I'm 99% sure, is done. Um, and in hindsight, she probably should have stayed dead in four. I think it would be more impactful for her to stay dead after four. But yeah, that's, yeah. to me, the biggest flaw in the storyline, without a doubt. Second one is Atriox, right? I mean, you saw him. He was a badass in the beginning. Gone until the end of the credits in legendary mode. Yeah, and he legendary. wanted to... Yeah, that's he wanted the, to in see. legendary mode, not... Not even yeah, just not heroic. He played heroic. heroic. You thought, well, what happened to wow. Yeah. Right? So, like, you wanted to see more of him. You wanted to see more of the other villains. You wanted to see Eshrium kind of feel the burden of, like, he kind of explains it to you. But, like, I wanted to see Eshrium, and, and I watched Ackman's review, and I thought he made a good point. You wanted to see these villains, like, do impactful things during the game that made them badasses, right? I wanted to see Eshrium maybe blow up something that Chief was doing or – ruin something that the pilot was doing the only time we really got that is when um the elite kidnapped the pilot right that was the only time that we really saw in-game impactful moments that the bad guys did or when they tortured uh the the spartan but they didn't show them capturing the spartan right they didn't show them like you want to kind of see some of that 
Yeah. And like that, it would have built up more tension. Um, and we just didn't get enough of that. And like, I liked a lot that the campaign did. And we'll talk about some of the other elements, but those were my two big ones. I want to let you guys. Know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Aki, is there anything that you want to add for the things you didn't like? I know you mentioned some at the beginning things. This is just on story. Cause we'll talk about the, the ending and as an entirety when we get to the future stuff, but anything you didn't really like on the story component, cause it'll kind of build us up to the next question too. But what did you not really like? So I, I might get a little bit off topic here. It's not something that I didn't like. I think it's my fault. Um, I didn't like capture all the fobs and and save all of the um, the squads before I actually finished the story, the main story. You know, so uh, it's not not three four three's fault. I'm gonna you know that, I'm gonna tag it up to my fault. So I didn't go. Th- I kind of uh, played an even harder game, if you will, on legendary. <laughs> Because uh, I didn't have, you know, once you capture the, the fobs and once you um, uh, beat all the Spartan killers, you get these special guns and you can go through um, the campaign with, you know, heavier guns, I guess. So um, that's just something that um, I did that was wrong. But uh, again, if you're if you're watching this before you do the campaign, definitely capture all the fobs and try and kill as many Spartan killers that that you could. And uh, I was mentioning this to you, Mars. I was looking at, uh, you know, I finished the finished the uh, story, and uh, I still had like two or three fives left. And I was looking at my Spartan killer list, and there weren't pop, you know, none of them were there. There were seven or eight that weren't there, and I had no idea what I was doing wrong. And I captured the fives, and they all popped up. So um, the game is laid out correctly, and if you play it correctly, uh, you know, it'll be a little easier, even on legendary. You know, yeah, that's yeah, my- that's true. That's true. Like, and, and, no, no, I and I completely understand what you're saying. And I feel like uh, if you're not a completionist, like you're not someone that's going to do everything, there's some stuff you'd miss out on. And it's not necessarily like, you know, I feel like they should they should kind of give you more of a hint. Like, hey, you know what? You probably should do all these just, uh, you know, just in case. But, you know, I, I understand what you're saying. But to kind of build off of that question. Because we're talking about the five. Yeah, I think here. Cortana. Come on, tell me. Oh, well, well listen, Cortana. I was going to get more into that in the ending thing, but I didn't. I didn't. And my review talked about it entirely, where the the Cortana scene kind of felt rushed, where basically, like, she does all these things. And all of a sudden, when she finally realizes that she lost, she's like, you know what? Uh, I'm good now. Um, Chief, I'm going to help you out. And uh, I think we're good, right? This is a redemption. Like, at the end of the day, it's like, you, you did all these things like it's kind of seemed a little fast. And I felt like the and they all it all comes down to the fact that you killed Cortana and uh, Atriox was hidden. That's the start of the gameplay. Like that's that's the biggest issue. If Cortana wasn't hidden, like that wasn't killed in the beginning, she dies at the end of the game, like in, in real time. And then maybe she can take the entire game to like do redemption, basically help chief along the way like secretly and then she sacrificed herself at the end like that would make things a little bit better because then at least you're saying oh, okay well you know it doesn't re- resolve everything but at least it's redemption in some part to what what she was doing you know what i mean like that's the that's like the biggest thing i look at is because it's just so rushed and i i agree with you yeah. i agree, agree with you angelica it's just it's like it's a little too quick like you, you do all these things you, you show us at the very end that she does these things and then the same scene she's like i'm redemption now like you kind of have to let that simmer, like let it cook for a little longer before you just serve it, you know? So that's the big thing um, before we move forward. But let's talk now about like variety. And I, I and this kind of goes off what Haki was talking about with the fobs, right? And I feel like a lot the big debate right now was whether or not people felt as if there was not enough to do in the game or or even the map itself, that it was only staying in that uh, that Northwest Pacific like that Seattle area uh, climate where it's, you know, grassy terrain and that's all you got, that it was going to be boring. And I wonder, I wanted to ask you both about what you thought about that. And let's go with Haki first on this one. Did you feel that this lack of variety or small amount of variety made the game boring? Yeah. So I just straight up, I was never bored playing the campaign. I was always having fun playing the campaign. Um, the yeah like the weather and the terrain definitely could have there could have been there could have been way more variety you know you play halo from halo one to 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 now and there's always snow somewhere there's always a desert somewhere there's there's always different terrain it's not just rocks grass and trees so again i was never bored but i think they could have done a better job 
um, you know, in different areas of the map to, to give us a little more variety and at least, you know, um, you know, the weather or, or some type of terrain uh, mixture that they, they definitely could have done a better job. Again, it's never bored playing the campaign. The campaign um, was, was very good, but uh, definitely could have gave us more variety. Mm-hmm. And what about you, Langelico? Yeah, I agree with uh, I agree with Hakeem. Um, what I'll say is it it didn't I didn't think it made it less boring. It just and it, kind of the general statement of the campaign, like the campaign's good, but boy, it could have just been that much better with these kind of additions, right? And like you mentioned, you play all these Halos, you've always had a snow part, you've always had a desert part. You usually sometimes had a grassy swamp part, right? And and in this game, you had the banished uh, facilities, you had forerunner facility and you had uh, the stone outside stuff. Yeah. Right. No, so yeah. that was, that was the game, right. That was what you had no matter where you went or what, or what mission you played. Um, and I just feel if you hadn't even those wet, like they did the nine day, which was good. Right. They, it, and if they just had some, maybe some weather or some different parts of the ring that changed uh, the, the landscape, um, it definitely would have been an addition. I do. I, I can understand people saying uh, replayability. I think the first time you play it, I don't think you can get bored. But if you try to replay it um, and you're seeing the same stuff over and over again, uh, I could see people saying that they have issues with it. But I don't think it made it boring. But I definitely want to give a shout out when you went to um, when you went to some of these facilities in the levels three four three. The design of the maps and the art design were really good. Mm-hmm. They looked really good. So the yeah. variety wasn't there, but the look of the actual levels were really good. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing, and, and I can kind of build off of both, is that, you know, the I can agree of the criticism. I mentioned this in the review. I can agree the criticisms that there's not a lot of environments. Like, I mean, I keep said it best. You know, there's a lot of there's snow, there's desert, there's, there's swamp. Like, there's the Forerunner facilities. There's, there's a lot of things you can go into here. And Halo's always had that. Um, and I can understand the criticism of that. But I also didn't feel like it was boring. I mean, there's a lot of those side missions. And I mentioned this in review. The strongholds were like my favorite things to do. I felt like you you have so many ways of strategizing how to attack this. And I used to always mount up with a Razorback with a crew of Marines. And then we'd go fight. And then once you free a bunch of more Marines in there, you're rolling. And I at one point, I had like a squad of 15. And we're just strolling through that entire facility, like clearing corners and everything. And I felt like it was just a fun, it was a fun thing to do. And the map wasn't big enough where it felt like you're traveling forever too. So it was like a mixture of a, a solid map size with a lot of stuff to do. And, you know, it didn't feel boring, but I also, I, I can agree that it was, it, it could have been more varied, like, and I'm sure they will add that in the DLCs, but that's not what the, this question's about the current state. And I think that's like the big thing is that it's in the current state, not a lot of variety, um, but there's definitely a lot of room that you can build on that. Um, the kind of last question of the campaign aspect, is about music and music. And obviously, you know, a lot of people are really into the music like me and Legella kill. I know Haki, you've been kind of listening to some stuff that we kind of shared. Um, some people aren't really like, they don't really care. Uh, but I feel like I want to, I want to ask, you know, both of you, what you're feeling about the songs of this game compared to other games. And also, did you like it? Did you not like it? Just your general thoughts. And I'll go first with Legella kill here. And then we'll jump to Haki. Yeah, I'll keep it short. I love it. Um, I know people don't really care much about music, but I say, you know, music makes um, the environment that much better. It makes the moments that much better. It makes Mm -hmm. them tense. Like whether you watch a movie, TV show, when they have good, you know, they they hit the right music or or good music in the right moment, like it can make you those moments memorable. Um, And it's the same thing for video games. Um, So because video games is practically in a campaign, it's some story writing, right? It's, it's trying to tell you a story and you're reenacting the story, which is, you know, the best part of gaming. Um, so, you know, there, there's definitely different things, but I love the music. So Aki, what do you think? Yeah, I definitely think the music is, uh, it's always been a key part of Halo again, uh, four and five, uh, a little lackluster, but they brought the music back and, uh, like music equals emotion, right? So, uh, in the story mode, you're, you're just walking around, right? And all of a sudden uh, you run into a, a group of uh, elites or, or a chieftain and the music starts pumping up and you start pumping up, you know, you're, you walk into, uh, walk around the corner and there's, um, you know, uh, 
uh, let's say, uh, or you go up to a boss fight, you know, and the music starts playing, it gets you pumped up, you know. Um, mm. I think the music is super important, and the music did kind of, uh, you know, hype me up to to play the the story mode. So definitely, they they get an A plus with music. Yeah, no, I I thought that the music, in my opinion, uh, definitely brings you back to what old Halo was was built on, right? That music musical tie to the story and the impact of it. I mean, I've always felt it in the emotional yeah. moments where like Spartans were getting killed and chief, you could feel the motion behind some of the songs. And like you, like you both mentioned that like whenever a song, like for example, you play the road to the final, like the second to last level, that road, that's like mayhem. You're riding in a tank and it's mayhem. That's where they play the original sound, like the original song. And you're just like, this is it's go time. It's game time now. And you're just jacked up. And I feel like they did a good job of revamping old songs, but also making new ones. I thought the, like Eshram fight song was like classic. I felt like once you you're fighting Eshram and then all of a sudden it gets to the final, the final stage. And then the music just gets even pumped up even more. And you're like, it's go time. And he's, he's coming at you straight on. You're like, all right, let's, let's do this. And it, it just, it was a good way of implementing all that stuff. But yeah. So I, so that's going to be it for the campaign in the current state. Let's jump down to the multiplayer. And I'll remember when the rumors of multiplayer coming out before the campaign were rapid and they were like, I remember the rumors were like, it's going to come out a year in advance. And I was like, there's no way that the multiplayer would ever come out first before the campaign. And lo and behold, the multiplayer comes out the, on the 20th anniversary, November 15th. And I was in utter shock because I remember I was like, I kept hearing more and more rumors about it. And I was, I remember verbatim, like, it was, like me and Haki were like, Oh, we're going to take off the day that on December 8th, we're going to take off. We'll we get to play the game at launch. And then all of a sudden, November 15th, multiplayer is out. I'm just like, you like, and I literally, I flew home, did not, like, I didn't care about laws that day. I flew home to play multiplayer, but I remember that was such a big deal. So I, I, I just remember it was such an impactful thing. So I kind of want to start off with the simple question of gameplay. What's the, did you like the way that 3 for 3 had implemented their gameplay in this game? And, and would you rather it have been closer to the Halo 5? more speed or would you rather have been the way it is currently like what what was your general feel of the gameplay did, did you like it did you not uh let's start with hockey this time and then we'll go with angelico yeah yeah so let me just first off say that i took off five days for <laughs> the original date that it was supposed to be dropping and it comes out in november um i still i still took off those five days and just played uh non-stop but um, I think the multiplayer, the speed of the multiplayer is fantastic. It's a perfect mix between um, Halo 5 and, and Reach. Um, a few months before this game dropped, um, we actually, uh, uh, Marsman and uh, Langello, we started playing Halo Reach to kind of get us in the motion and the, um, you know, the speed of what Halo Infinite would be. And I definitely think it helped. Um, everyone is not you know, using their thruster every five seconds to evade um, everything that you throw at them. Um, but you have to use more strategy. You have to go and find the thruster. You have to go find the gravel shot. Um, there's more strategy and there's gun battles over those things. You know, once you get them, then you have a leg up on, you know, the people that don't have them. So I think the speed is good. Um you know, you're a Spartan, so you're able to run. Mars, I, I know you uh, talked about that. You're able to run, right? You're a super soldier. Yeah. You shouldn't be able to just walk, right? So you're able mm -hmm. to run. Um, you're able to slide. You can super slide, too, in, in certain uh, points of, of every map. So, um, you know, it's still quick, but it's not, um, you know, outrageous where people are all over the map and, and doing crazy things. I like the speed. Um, I if they fix a few things, the, the game could be a better multiplayer than Halo 5, if it's not already a better multiplayer uh, than Halo 5. So it's definitely, I think, um, 343 did a very good job with the speed, at least, of, of the multiplayer. So, Langelka, what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree. I think gameplay is uh, also a, a step up from 5. Um and then we'll talk about the overall multiplayer aspect, but just gameplay itself. Um, I agree with a lot that's already been said that I, I like the, you have to go find certain power weapons. You have to go find um, different uh, attachments that can help you. There's a little more strategy 
And overall, there's a little bit more close quarters fighting, especially in Team Slayer. Um, and, and it feels like gone are the days of just thrusting every five seconds uh, from Halo 5 to the Infinite uh, long range battle. Although there still is in Halo Infinite, um, 5 felt like everything was a long range fight. There wasn't a lot of close range fights. Um, and so I think Infinite, I think it's a step in the right direction doing, getting back to closer range fights for Halo feels more like Halo. Um, and thank God there's no more Spartan charges. And oh, God. Yeah, that's, that's to me, is the best thing. That's oh, the my best God. I, hate yeah. Spartan charge. I don't blame 3 for 3 for trying new things. Mm. I am glad that they said, hey, this was a mistake. We got to get it out. Yeah, no, I, I remember when we were discussing, you know, to ourselves, like in private, like about how would you fix Halo 5's multiplayer? Where you said those were the first two things off the list, Spartan Charge and Grandpa, just get them out of the game entirely. And everything else would have kind of been okay. Like, you know, the, the thrusters I thought were like a natural component that can help you dodge, right? Sprinting was, was, it was fast, but it was like manageable. But if you got rid of those other things, you'd be a lot better. And then, you know, in the clambering, like climbing up, but the way, and I agree with both of you, the Halo, the way Halo Infinite does gameplay is so much more efficient than whatever what you know Halo Five did, and, and it's so much easier to pick up and play. I think the equipment, using equipment back in this game that we used to be in Halo Three, was a was a more than welcome return. I mean, you know, it, and I think, and I mentioned this in the video, and you guys already said it. You know, I never have to hear another rant video about why Sprint ruins Halo ever again. Because it, it, they fixed it. They made it so it doesn't impact the game entirely too much. It does make you slightly faster, so it appeases both crowds. And I, it kind of reminds you of Halo 3, Halo Reach. You know, I feel like I'm fi I'm happy with that. And I think that's such a good thing to know that it's on the right track. Um, I mean, it's modern gaming at this point, right? Your Spartan, like you were saying, should be able to run. Yeah, he and can, should be he able can, to pick not, himself uh, off of ledges. Yeah, he can climb a ledge. He can not do a, a fast walk. He can jog like it's not like a sprint. He's jogging like that's what he's yeah. doing in this. He at least he's jogging like he's, he's supposed to be built like a machine. Like he could do that stuff. And, and that's just normal. But they kind of build off of the gameplay. One of the crucial opponents is the guns. Right. And I think that the big debate on the guns right now is how do you feel about the assault rifle pistol starts in all game modes? I think right now most people are saying we should add the battle rifle and assault rifle or battle rifle and pistol as it starts. What would you rather have the you know, rifle pistol starts, or we should we should we implement battle rifle into this opening loadouts? And I'll go with Angelic Kill first in this one. And we'll go hockey. I mean, I I hear a lot of I would call them Halo purists who always refer back to Halo One days, but I feel Halo was at his apex in two and three, and so I am a guy about starting with the assault rifle. I think that is the purest of Halo is that. And uh, so, no, I, I'm i okay with – and this is the, goes back to issues that I have is why can't you have two playlists, one where you start with the assault rifle and then one where it's kind of, you know, tactical, where you start with the battle rifle. So I'm an assault rifle guy. I think the assault rifle uh, is, is the perfect start gun, and I like hunting for the battle rifle. I'm not a completely against. I like using the battle rifle. I think the battle rifle is really good in this game. Um, feels really good, but I like hunting for the battle rifle, and I don't blame people in Team Slayer uh, ranked if they want to start with it. But I feel that there should be two game modes. Mm -hmm. That one you start with the assault, and one you start with the battle rifle. Hate the pistol, yeah. though. Hate the pistol. <laughs> so, uh, so Haki, what do you think? Yeah, so um, uh, and and the two game modes, I I, I agree if they want to add one for uh, just regular Slayer, but the second game mode is ranked, right? So ranked, you start with just the battle rifle, right? And you have to hunt and and go get other guns. But I think starting with the assault rifle and the pistol is fine. I think they nailed the starting guns. Um, you know, ranked, you're gonna go with the uh, battle rifle. You're gonna go with no mini map. I absolutely love that. N not um, you know, if you crouch, you're not seeing no, no mini map at all. Um, you know, invest in some headphones, even if they're 20 bucks from GameStop, you can hear people walking around, you can hear people running around. Um, no mini map, battle rifle for ranked. I'm totally fine with the assault rifle. Mars, we were talking about this, and, and um, Langella, we were talking about this as well. It's probably the best assault rifle 
um, in a very, very long time. It's actually powerful. You actually can use it even against other non-power weapon guns, right? So um, they did a fantastic job with the assault rifle, battle rifle as well. Very clean, very smooth. Um, the pistol, I there's there's you can look at it two ways. One way is that it's not the Halo Five pistol. Thank God, right? Yep. It's not a game changing pistol, um, but you can like finish people off if they're like close to death with that pistol if you run out of your AR or if you run out of your primary weapon. Um, I think the pistol is a okay sidearm for the start of of games. So. I think they nailed the the guns and all the guns around the map. There's not that there's not um, too many guns and there's not uh, you know um, too little guns. I think the gun placements are cool on the wall um, and I think there's a perfect amount of guns um, around the map as well. So I, I think they did a very good job with the guns and some of the new guns as well, Cindercaster and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I think I agree with both of you. I think assault rifle is probably the best I've ever had in in any Halo game, and that's that's a great thing. Um, assault rifle has been one of those guns that have just been so inconsistent for a long time. And I know the big debate is about should we make the pistol better or not? Don't, don't do it. No, don't change it because it wasn't meant to be a, the, the game wasn't meant to have those pistols be your starting gun. It was called the sidekick because it's the last case scenario. You use that thing to finish people off, but somehow fans, I mean, not, well, not saying somehow they have accomplished the way of using that as a primary and have been very efficient at doing so. So I know a lot of people, and I know Angel kills one of them, and I'm I'm all, I'm all on the fence of that too. About you know the pistol is not supposed to be the top gun. The assault rifle is supposed to be the top gun. Usually the pistol is supposed to be the gun you swap for something else. But you know it depends on who you play, whether the pistol is good or not. And and I think that you're always going to find kids that will make do better with guns that they're not supposed to do well in. So I think that if you when they have that first patch update, which uh, updates have been saying that it's going to be in the mid February about adjusting guns, the pistol cannot be better. It could stay the same, or you make the assault rifle better. But I, I can't really see how you do, you would make it better. It's already very good. So um, like, just don't change the battle rifle, don't change your assault rifle, and don't change you know, the pistol. Like Everything else, like obviously, it makes some adjustments, but do not change those guns. Just just keep them. It's fine. Like what, We can adjust with the pistol. And I, honestly, you could adjust it and make it more, more nerfed, I guess, but Having it the same way, you can deal with it, but you know it's really up for debate there. Um, go just real, just real quick. I just want to yeah. mention there's two guns that need a big boost. Oh, I'm, oh my god, yeah, Avenger, and then I'll open it up to you too. What's the what do you think the second one is that needs to be adjusted like stronger or nerfed? Yeah, stronger. Which one you Str say? Which one you cut off? Ravager. Ravager. Yeah, you saying the you saying the Ravenger and the Commando or like the guns that are like. Oh no! Uh, no, the the pulse rifle is There's the pulse rifle, <laughs> and Ravenger is the two guns that will be literally unusable in the entire game. And then Commando, you can make an adjustment, so like make it back to the same one you had in the in the flight, so because it was solid in the flight. It wasn't like my best gun, but it was good enough to use. But the Ravenger was very good in the flights, and then it was hot garbage in in the current state. Pulse rifle is literally was bad in the flight, and still like probably worse now. And honestly, I'm confused on like why anyone would in their right mind pick it up. And when I see a challenge that says get kills with the pulse rifle, I'm instantly swapping it. I'm not doing that challenge. That's not I'm not going to make myself miserable doing it. And I think that you got to fix those guns. I mean, we could have the debate all day about the mangler and like, what do you do with the mangler? But those those two guns, a Ravager and pulse rifle are unusable. They're just unusable weapons at this point. Yeah, I. I... You guys pretty much nailed the ones I the disruptor is another one. Um, where it's just so it's so weird to use. It's so weird. Sometimes it'll work on a vehicle and stop it. Sometimes it it won't after you shoot it a bunch of times. Um can't tell if it's really hurting the other player when you shoot him in the head a bunch of times with it. Um, and then sometimes you die from it. So it's 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 just such a weird gun. I, I'm sure there's people watching this that know how to use it better than me, but the disruptor sucks. I can't stand <laughs> using disruptor either. And and I just uh man, it's terrible. But the Ravenger is definitely the worst one. Ravenger is definitely the worst. Um, it's don't even pick it up. It's not worth it. Yeah, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Um you know. <laughs> it's it's just yeah, I they gotta fix that stuff. So let's go to the, the next major component of multiplayer is gonna be the maps. I mean, I think everyone here really loves to see maps. Currently, there's 10 maps at launch. 
You have a seven. You have seven arena with Aquarius, Bazaar, Behemoth, Launch Site, Live Fire, Recharge, and Streets, and then three big team battle maps: Deadlock, Fragmentation, and High Power. Um, just a side note here, and I mentioned this in the review: Halo Three had eleven maps at launch. Halo Two had twelve maps at launch. Both games were created ten plus years ago. So, um, the question here is: What's your most favorite map and your most hated map? So uh, let's go hockey first. Favorite map and hated map. All right. So um, my favorite map, uh, I got two for this. We're gonna we'll go big team and we'll go Slayer. So um, or rank Slayer slash rank. So my favorite map is uh, Behemoth on ranked or Slayer. Um, I like it's very versatile, right? You got the two big buildings with a long corridor underneath for you know either the invisibility or the overshield. Um, you know you got West and East Tower. Um, and just it, there's you can either have close quarters in the buildings or um, you can have the long range fight. So I think it's a very versatile, um, a very versatile map. It's good for ranked and it's good for quick play. Uh, the other next best map is going to be high power. Um, one of the big reasons is because I can fly the wasp on it. I love the wasp in this game. It's a very, very fun vehicle. Um, but that that map as well uh, on all three, uh, all, all excuse me, all four. Right um all four playlists it's pretty good other than obviously stockpile which <laughs> they need to figure they something out. That. Yeah, we'll talk about that one. Yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about that later but and then the yeah. word i'm sorry marshall you're gonna say something no 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 i was gonna so what was your hated oh yeah so the, the hated map is uh probably gonna be uh launch site launch I'm site. not a fan of it it's like People will say, I'm going to say that it's too big. Well, people will tell me Behemoth is just as big, but this is like too big and too close quarters at the same time. There's a lot of corridors um, in some portions and just a, too many buildings for me, you know? So it's like too big for Slayer and obviously too small for Big Team Battle. Um, and I'm just not a big fan of the vehicles that one side gets both vehicles, you know, the other side gets a power weapon or two, maybe, uh, you know, and you got to hope uh, the best player picks up the skewer or something, you know? Um, so that's probably my uh, least favorite, uh, least favorite map. So Angelica, what do you think? For favorite, I don't really have a number one favorite. I actually like all the maps except for the most hated one I'm about to say. Um, they're just not enough big team maps. I, I just, they, I think that's one of the issues that and we'll get to the multiplayer problems, but um, to me, they needed more big team maps, um, but the ones that they have, I thought are pretty solid. I just want more of it um, with a little more variety. Uh, so um, I like those. And for the most part, I, I like the Slayer map. I thought they did a good job. But like you stated, if you're comparing yourself to games made 10 plus years ago with the amount of maps that you have, I mean, that's like, that's not a good, that's not good at this point. That's not yeah. good at this point. So, um, but my most hated, and I agree, launch site. I know people like if you play on launch site that's not Fiesta, it sucks. Let's just be real. It sucks. Um, one side gets vehicles, the other side gets the power weapon. And it's just it, it if you don't end up on the side with the vehicles, I'm miserable starting the game. Yeah. Right from the get-go. Oh, um, I agree. Yeah. It's just it's just bad. And you make a good point. It's it's a little too big for Slayer, but it's also probably not big enough to have 12 people on it. So you're kind of stuck in between there and the spawning in launch site is just oh my god it is trash yeah it is absolute trash yeah and i think that and i agree with kind of both of you generally i think most maps were were liked um now if i'm picking the favorites i'd say bizarre and high power are probably my two favorites i think uh i'd like the the aesthetic of bizarre and high power are very cool a lot of good weapons on both of them that you can use um probably the least favorite is launch site i can agree with that i feel like if if they still had eight v eight big team battle, it would be probably a good size map. It, it or even if on Behemoth eight v eight, good size big team battle map. Um, but yeah, launch site is just weird. It's just and, and I think the biggest downside right now in maps, this is not enough of them. I feel like we just we there's too there's too little of them that you feel like you're getting to play too much of the same thing. I think there was a time where all three of us were playing and we played played dead deadlock like three times in a row. We played stockpile, capture the flag, and uh, in, in total control, and we're just like, all right, we're kind of done with this map. We kind of let's just let's switch it up a little bit, and that's yeah. the downside of having 
only 10 maps and three of them, only three are big team battle. Like if yeah. you made six and four, I like if you got rid of launch site entirely, made a bigger version of it and made a big team battle map, I think we would all kind of be in, 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 in happiness here. I think we'd all not like the glory, like everything's amazing, but we would be a little more happier about the maps because you're getting a little bit more variety there. Um, I don't love uh, one thing I'll say about high power. Love the map. I don't love the weapon setup. I love mm-hmm. the weapons in the game, in the map, but some of the setups on one side is just, you know, like a couple weapons on the top, top floor. One of them's right behind, one of them's by the wasp. Um, mm-hmm. It's just a weird setup on where some of the weapons are. Yeah, I could agree. Um, that, the, I, that I don't The other like. side, the other side is just as weird. Yeah. Because you, you have guns in the back of the base. Like, you have to walk your ass around the back to go get a nice gun. Like, yeah. like the sniper's put them in all spot, by yeah. the stone. Like, the, yeah. the beam sniper is already, you know, it, it's the weapon setup is weird. And and one thing kind of just before we move on to the next part is, you know, when it comes to maps, you know, weapon setups are cool. One thing I don't like that they force in this game is every gun has a weapons, like little cache or no weapon, like little weapon placement pod where like the weapons come out of. And it's cool that you can see the spawns, but like, you know, one of the aesthetics of all the other Halo games is like weapons are like placed in like an area. Like they're just laying there, you know, kind of like there was a fight and this gun was left behind or something like that. And I feel like that, that you can have both. You can have a little a weapon rack to pick it up, or you can have it on the floor. Like, you can do both. Or or even better yet, why don't you have markers? You know, like those drop, those drop ordinance packages. Like, oh, ordinance is inbound, and then you're just like, where is it? Like, where do you see it? And then there's no marker. You got to tell us, you know, what? where is this thing located so I can go pick it up? Um, and we can go into a whole tangent, and that kind of ties us right into the next question and we're the last one of the multiplayer which is what's your biggest issue with the multiplayer and let's start off with hockey first and then we'll jump to the angelic field so hockey what do you think what's the biggest issue you have uh so i'm sure everyone will agree uh and we can agree on this and then say you know our individual issues but not being able to get into a game is a huge issue right now (laughs) um whether you're solo queuing, God forbid you have, you're trying to play with four people um, and you just get into the death loop of, of now I got a dashboard and let's try it again. Yep. Third, fourth time, let's try it again. All right, never mind. Let's just go play Slayer. Uh, it's been happening for a few weeks now. Uh, they, they need to change it. Um, Big Team Battle is such an essential part of, um, you know, Halo that um, it's, it's a problem. It's a serious problem, you know? So I think that is... Uh, that's definitely a huge issue in big team battle. Um, the other issue again, are the, are, are the vehicles, not the vehicles that they place, but the health of certain vehicles, the health of one vehicle in particular that I was a savage in halo five with, and now I laugh at it and I'd rather go just drive a Razorback somewhere. Um, and that is the Banshee. Um, you can't, you can't survive more than 30 seconds. You get shot with a pistol. You get shot with anything. Um, you touch the ground. You touch a wall, and it's going to blow up. Um, you know, I was able to splatter people in Halo 5. You, you don't even want to get anywhere near the ground in, in this game. And it's it doesn't even give you a warning. The ghost, you know, flashes red sparks. The warthog, your tires will fly off. Um, you get shot four or five times with a pistol, and it starts its blowing up sequence. And it now just went to the wasp that's the only one that i fly and it's a little depressing i love the banshee you know the banshee is a badass vehicle you see a banshee in the sky and you you go get something to shoot it down with you know um Mm -hmm. and you can pull out your pistol and shoot it down so that's definitely my biggest uh my biggest problem is the is the uh the health of the vehicles the banshee so angelica what do you think what's your biggest issue yeah i the server issue for big team battle is the clear cut number one. Um, we've play all played video games a long time and people watching this, they've played video games. There's always been when you, especially when you get to bigger, bigger maps and more and more people playing, you'll have days where servers go down for a day or a couple days, but now we're talking a couple of weeks. And, you know, this is, this is something that is a major problem because whether you agree with certain things or not in a game, if you can't play the game, that is a red flag, right? And so they need to do a much better, you know, they, they got to get it fixed ASAP. Mm-hmm. Um, I also agree about the, the Banshee issue and vehicles in general. Um, I think it is a little more inconsistent. I, they do a better job with the Warthog and Ghost, but 
even at times things just blow up without any um without any warning at all um so uh, some of the vehicle things but I, but i think the biggest issue you know we're talking about certain things of gameplay and we talk about the servers are a big one we have to talk about the cosmetics and the you know modern gaming microtransactions right so to me that is a major major issue um the free to play mindset in video games nowadays where you have to buy everything and halo although it could change um they could be making it cheaper i know the news came out today uh there's some things that might not be in bundles anymore but not giving the option for kids to grind it out and, and get rec points um that they could buy cosmetics and you know the the, the variety of cosmetics is just it's it's not impressive Mm -hmm. um and they promised a lot before about being one of the most probably the most customizable halo and it doesn't even reach reach standards halo reach standards right so that to me is probably outside of the server issue the number two issue Mm -hmm. no i I, yeah and and it's funny because we're both well i i feel like my when i'm writing down my notes the you know hey the vehicle health is a big thing I had progression and customization as like my biggest because I'm I'm such a big person on customizing my Spartan to the highest degree possible. I love the reach in its way it's it did customizations um where and a lot of these things sound like good ideas like armor cores and being able to customize an armor core but the, one of the dumbest things that I feel microtransactions are are bad enough like right? where you you don't get credits to earn for in-game playing and buying them. That's one thing that's dumb, and I and I I'll be honest, I did buy things, so I, I'll be honest there. That that is something I did, but one of the dumbest things is that when you buy an armor, you can't use it for any other armor core or colors. You buy a color, certain certain armor cores you can't get that color with, and, and it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen because of the fact that you're you're restricting the creativity of your community. Like let them pick your color. Like I think I know the whole armor coding thing is similar to Destiny in a certain way, but let let people pick the color they want for their emblems. Let them pick the color they want for their Spartan, and let them put armor piercing armor pieces to where they want their armor cores. If someone wants to make a, a samurai version of Master Chief, let them do it. What what's the downside of doing that? Like, it's technically a free armor core, so you're not losing money on that by having them wear that and then they're for, in a different core. And I, I already mentioned you could solve all these issues with the microtransactions by having earnable credits. Just have it where you earn credits by doing challenges. Then you'll have kids buying that that stuff off the store. So apparently, apparently the news is they are adding that component. Apparently, well, guess we'll find out. But if that if they don't, then this is still the same problem. But if they yeah. do, then guess what? You waited a month to implement it. Like the you, least they could do, the least they could do. If you can't get earnable credits in game, they have to make everything cheaper. Like, yes. Like you're three dollars, two dollars, not not not, spending, not talking ten. Yeah, yeah you're 10, spending 15. money to get a color that you can't use on multiple armors is it's absolutely screwed up, absolutely screwed up. Yeah, there's no, no justification I, for it. There isn't. Um. All right. Well, listen. We, I want to kind of give us our our final thoughts, and our I want you both to give your ratings. And I know what I'll give my rating first because that was part of the review, and I I really hope. Anyone watching this video, if you haven't seen the review, it's in the description below. So please check that out. It, it was a long video, a lot of work there. But overall, I gave the game a 9.3 out of 10. Um, and generally, I, I'm not going to go into every detail here, but I want you to, to give me your, your official review score out of 10 and what you thought. And just give me a brief reason why you picked it that way. So well, I'll first go with Haki, and then we'll go with Angelikil. So Haki, you first, your rating. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to give you... Um... My multiplayer, my campaign, and the combined rating because it matters, right? Yeah. Uh, the multiplayer, uh, again, we talked from you know the speed and everything, and the actual components of gameplay, weapons, and everything. Again, they they did a fantastic job, but we're talking about right now, uh, and there are some serious problems, right? The uh, transactions, the month, the extra money that I'm spending, you know, uh, if I need to buy stuff. Um, and the BTV server is not working. So the multiplayer is going to get an 8.7 for me. 
um, the campaign, uh, which again, we discussed, we went into it, fantastic campaign. It was very, very good. Could have been better if they just did a, you know, uh, they put a little bit more effort into it. Could have been that much better. Campaign gets a nine too. So my, you know, overall ranking is an 8.9 and that's for right now. Um, again, multiplayer can be in the nines, which would bump my ranking up into, you know, the nines, but I feel a little weird not being in the nines because I love the game, but, uh, I'm giving it an eight, nine because of the multiplayer and, and some of the major problems. Um, again, there, the positives are, are, are better, but there are some serious problems that need to be fixed immediately. So eight, nine. Okay. So Angelica, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I watched Mars's review. I thought he was a little generous giving it over a 9, 9.3. I have it at an 8.8, so I'm just behind Haki. Um, and he makes a lot of good points. Like, it, it had the potential to get in the 9s. But to me, when I um, – I think Halo put out a good game, 3-4-3. Uh, three, three. They put out a good Halo game, and I think they were also helped with the fact that uh, their competition, which was Call of Duty Vanguard and – uh, battlefield put out bad products so comparing it to bad products you think you know this is an elite game but just kind of got to take a step back um, and compare games in a broad spectrum to other great games i think games in the over nine are elite title games games over 9.5 are all timer games um, i don't think it meets that threshold but looking on the other end i think 8.5s are good games so that's why I'm at an 8.8 .8 because I think they're in between those two being a good game and a, an elite game. And the reason why I can't get to a nine is because we didn't even talk about there's no co-op, right? And Halo coming out without co-op, which is an integral part. Now it's coming down the line, right? It says six months um, and that's with no delays, right? So six months after launch with no delays, we're expected to have co-op. Nine months after launch, we're expecting to have Forge, which was not something big for me, but I know it's huge for the Halo community. So they were missing two key components about Halo um, from launch, right? So those two, plus the uh, server issue in Big Team Battle, uh, microtransactions, I'm not going to knock them too hard because uh, this is a sad part about modern gaming. This is not everyone's, this is, this is every game now. Mm -hmm. Right. They're coming in now. They're talking about NFTs in games. So we're getting down to ugliness in video games. So I can't knock them too hard because that's what a lot of people do. But you got to give us more. There's got to be more customization. So the gameplay is great. I think they took a real good step in direction in the campaign. Best campaign 343 made. But those those knocks can't put it into the elite status because of those those things that they're missing. Yeah, no, and listen, I think that the biggest thing is, is that everyone has their own ways of, of rating scores. So I think that like for for some people, you know, a nine is like, you know, top tier versus some people and be like, well, nine's a good game. You know what I mean? So everyone has their variations. And if we were to as a as a Marsman crew create a rubric for how we rate games, I think we probably would we get a little bit more closer to I think the score. I mean, my I obviously mine looks a little more inflated compared to your your both your scores. I think I also kind of looked at it as being in the comparison of mo modern gaming. And that's why you kind of mentioned like, okay, well, it's like compared to all the modern gaming titles that we see nowadays, as much as there's things that are not included in the game at the moment, what they did, what their mission was, was to answer questions they had from previous badly written games and, and make things for the future. And that's the reason why I was kind of like excited about it. But, you know, that, that's like, that's just the thing. So just to kind of build on, to that point where let's talk about the ending and, and we kind of mentioned the Cortana part. So we don't really have to go much into Cortana in that arc. Cause that was, that was a little down on uh, all three of us here, but for when it comes to the ending where the heroic ending, if you don't, you know, this is I already said spoiler loose beginning, but I'll say it again, spoiler warning, right? The game is over. So now let's talk about the future. The ending of halo infinite sets it up where halo on the heroic ending is it, it's like a, yeah, like we, we beat the banish right now. Let's, let's kick them off the ring. Let's keep going. And that's it. And legendary. And you have those really long credits. Like that was the longest credits I've ever seen. And then you have the legendary ending where you get a glimpse of basically flashback conversation of when the, the, the forerunners had locked away the endless. And all of a sudden at the same time in modern era, 
you have Atriox opening up the doors to the endless being released, right? And I think if you get the, I'll get your both your takes here after I can mention these. If you get the heroic ending, you're kind of sitting there like that's the cheesiest crap to end the game on. Like, yeah, like we we won, but now what? Legendary, you feel like you kind of, you know, all right, we didn't even win technically because the the banish were successful what they wanted to do, and Atriox is alive. So it's like, what now? So I kind of want to see what you, both of you think here. But what would you think about the ending, and what would you have liked to see more if you, you know, if if you were going to add more there? So let's start off with Angelic Hill first, and then we'll go to hockey. Yeah, I spoke about the Cortana stuff, so I won't go into Cortana. Um, not that part was bad. I thank God Atriox is alive because I thought if he died off screen would have been a real big mistake. So it's good that he is back. Um, I wanted to see him more in the game, but again, we know that he's going to be involved. So I thought that was important, especially since they destroyed practically all the generals of the banish. So all the banish are done. You're going to have probably new generals come in with Atriox leading the charge. Um, the Harbinger got killed. Um, wasn't sure if that was the best course of action is to kill her off. Uh, but you know, we know that the D the endless is coming in the DLC and they're kind of taking a page out of the destiny book where it's going to be DLC additions, um, to the story. Not so much as like, Hey, here comes the next infinite two or whatever, uh, next installment they make. We're going to start with DLCs first. Um, so it, it you know, th there's a lot of questions and some of the questions bring in treatment, right? Like the endless, what are they? Who are they? Um, you kind of have an idea of what they are. If you know the lore, you probably know more than the general fan. Um, but so the intriguing part is why the banish wanted to release them. What is the intention of the endless? Uh, you know, are they going to join? You know, the rumors about the flood, are they going to be involved? So there's definitely intrigue. And my big question is all the characters in Halo 5 weren't in this game. So are any of them going to make the appearance? We know Lasky was on the ring, right? Apparently Locke is on the ring. Where are we going to see them, right? Where are they? What are they doing? What are some of these other characters? What's Halsey doing? What's Palmer doing? What, what you know, what are these characters doing? Uh, where are they? What's going on? So, you know, there, I thought, again, took a step in the right direction. Definitely leaves a lot of question marks. And you shouldn't have all the answers because it's supposed to be a saga. Right. So it, the, the intrigue is there for sure. Um, but definitely a lot of questions and I didn't hate the ending. I didn't love it. I, I was kind of caught in between. So Aki, what do you think? Yeah, I would agree. It was more of a, a neutral ending for me as well. Um, again, master chief, you know, try, try, triumphs over evil. Like he usually does. Um, the, I thought the banish were really cool. Um, seeing all, you know, the Spartan killers, all the bosses were cool. Um, like Frank said, thank God he tracks didn't d just die. You know, um, he was, he was the real villain, you know, we didn't even get to see him and he was really the, you know, he was, um, uh, Eshram's right-hand man, you know, uh, Eshram was his mentor. So, um, I think, uh, you know, the Harbinger, she was cool. You know, she looked cool. Uh, I thought she had some pretty cool powers and everything as well. Um, you know, her dying was a little iffy too, but, um, uh, to see what the endless are going to be, um, how they're going to look, how they're going to act and what, like what their, you know, uh, goal is to be is, is going to be a very, uh, interesting, uh, and it's going to be an interesting, uh, thing to see. So yeah. I hope, uh, I hope sooner or later that, that, that it does come out the new, uh, DLC because I'm definitely down to get right back into the campaign. Yeah, so just built perfect segue. I mean, so after the ending, it kind of gives you a, a sense of a next, like another major story plots building into this. So what would you want to see in next DLC drop? And uh, so how I'll let you kind of start us off. What what were what's a, a thing you would want to see in the next major story component? Yeah, so um I would like to see like Frank had mentioned, like the um the rumors of the flood, right? So flood the flood have always been a uh a scary but key part of of halo you know they they come and they destroy worlds so um to see what the um you know what the endless and if the flood come back what they do together or if they're <laughs> if they are actually together 
that would be pretty scary, not knowing what the analysts are, just knowing what the flood do, you know, um, see if they're either going to be teaming up or if they're going to be um, enemies of, of the enemy uh, of the analysts. So um, to see what they're actually going to do and hopefully to see Atriox still lead um, a army of the banished, you know, having new bosses, um, maybe having a little bit more background to those bosses. Um, yeah, I want to keep seeing the elites, keep seeing the, um, uh, the brutes and everything. I thought the chief, you know, the, the chieftains, all of them were, were really cool with the gigantic hammers and they're flying through the air and everything. Those, those guys are really cool. So I, I really liked, uh, you know, I, I really like seeing the, the, um, the banished and I hope they, you know, I, I hope they come back in, in some form or another. So. Yeah, so Linjoka, what do you think? What, what would you want to see as the next major DLC expansion? Yeah, I, I mean, we kind of got a hint of it. Um, they, you know, three for three trademark endless in the title for their next whatever, uh, which I'm assuming is going to be the DLC uh, title. Um, so I'm assuming we're going to get a heavy dose of the endless, finding out about the endless, um, you know, what their connection is going to be with the banished. Uh, mm -hmm. So that to me, I, I just want to see because that's what, you know, originally we thought, and I think there was probably multiple missions for the Banish. I think the first one was to, because Cortana did what she did to their home planet to beat her and they ended up running into UNSC and they wanted to beat them. Um, but then the second part was teaming up with the Harbinger to release the Endless. So exactly, you know, what, why would you think that is the proper course of action, right? Um, that's the big question, and they need to answer that. And obviously, you know, like Chris said, like I, he said, the flood. I mean, we know that every Halo ring has a detainment zone. We know the flood is still out there uh, from Halo War games, Halo Wars 2, excuse me. So we know the flood is around. Is, is the flood going to be involved in this, uh, yeah. on this new ring? No, and uh, I agree with you. I think. And if you find where the, if you really are big into looking where every little spot is, you can find the flood. They have the little containment spot where the flood is being contained into like a little pod. I found it in the in the uh, walkthrough I did on the streams. It's it's like a little, and what's crazy, you walk in there, they got the song, like a little dark song that's like, it's, it's like on lockdown. They got like on their shields around it and everything. Like, I think that that's kind of a big thing. The Endless is definitely, I feel like going to be the next major drop, but the question is, about what else is going to be included. And I, I, you know, having the flood, having another force on the ring, making it a three way fight, you know, like I feel like those are like pivotal to, to Halo. Every Halo game that's been successful has always had three separate entities that are fighting against each other. And it makes, it makes the game more interesting that way. And we kind of already kind of talked about the flood, but what, what character from or character or group from a previous installment would you want to see in this new DLC? Cause I feel like, when you're looking at all these possibles, you know, the, the rumors are all, all over the place, you know? So what, what we'll do is hold Angelica. I'll, I'll ask you first from previous installments. So these could be, you know, good guys, bad guys from any previous Halo game. What would you rather see as a return into a new DLC? Do I want to see, or what I think I will see? Let, let's do both. Let's go. Who would you want to see? Yeah, I mean and who are you more likely to see? What I'd love to see is the Arbiter, um, but it doesn't make sense why he would be on the ring. So um, I don't think we will see him, but I'd love, I would love to see the Arbiter. I would love to um, see some of the characters from 5. Uh, maybe not love, but I want to know what's going on with them. So Lasky and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so those two, what I anticipate seeing, I don't – I can't imagine us seeing the Arbiter and his crew. Um, not sure if we'll see Locke yet, but I do imagine we'll see Lasky. I do imagine we're going to see the Endless, and, um, and I'm still holding out hope for the Flood, but I'm not 100% sure yet that that's going to happen. So, Aki, what do you think? So, who you want to see and who you, you expect to see? Um, I expect to see the Flood. I hope, I hope it does come true. I, I expect to see the Flood. I think um, you know, there's, they are super important to the, to the Halo franchise. Um, uh, so I, I definitely think that uh, we'll see them. I do want to see the Arbiter as well. I hope to see the Arbiter. The Arbiter uh, has always been a cool story, you know, the, 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 the arc of the Arbiter. So um, I definitely think that um, if those, at least those two are in, 
uh, I'll be pretty happy with obviously and, and seeing what the, the analysts will, will bring. All right, cool. So, I mean, when I look at it, I mean, there are rumors all over the place. You got the Arbiter rumors of Locke. Uh, because I, a lot of people are thinking, well, Arbiter's group must have been fighting on the ring alongside the Infinity, but there's been no indication of that so far. Uh, a lock makes sense. Possibly blue team, which is chief squad. It was on the ring as well. But if I'm looking at where I, I love to see, I love to see a lock redemption story. I mean, I think lock getting some background and some actual character development would actually give him some, at least some redemption in what he is as a person. Cause as much as I, I ragged on him in the Halo, in my Halo review, everyone rags on Locke and Halo, but you can't blame. I think you look at the backstory of the guy, he's actually pretty interesting, but they wrote him so horrid in the in Halo 5, and that's part of the reason why no one likes him. Do yeah. what, do I, what do I think is going to happen? You're, you're, I think you guys are right on the flood, but I think the Spirit of Fire is going to make a return. The Spirit of Fire, for anyone who doesn't know, from Halo Wars is the group that, and they're the group that fought against the Banished for the first time in Halo Wars 2. I can see them being the, t- the group that shows up to be, be the reinforcement that gives the, the remnants of UNSC on the bait on Halo to, that kind of and seeing that kind of battle again where you're going to see those major characters go against Atriox, which they did already, would be pretty interesting. And I it would be it would make sense and it would be interesting to see. So I think that would be what I what I expect to happen. But we talked a lot about story, but now let's go into the, the multiplayer. And one of the key things that I will ask first is about what do you want to see in the next season of this multiplayer? So season two is supposed to start around May. Um, what do you guys want to see? Will this conclude maps, modes, possibly playable elites, maybe playable brutes, new guns, vehicles? What do you want to see? Let's start off with hockey first and we'll go to Angelic Hill. So hockey, what do you think? Yeah. So I, I hope they at least fix the, all the things that we want them to fix. Right. So the servers, um, if they can fix the Banshee by then, that would be awesome. Um, I know Forge, uh, you know, is, is going to be coming. I think Forge is a super important part, you know, uh, having the Halo community make maps and playing all those cool maps that, that uh, the Halo community does make. I think that is always fun. So I can't wait for that. But um, I want to see, like we said, BTB be fixed. I also want to see my favorite big team battle map come back. And that is Valhalla. If I know it might not come back, you know, next season, but I want to see it as soon as possible. That is by far my favorite big team battle map in all of the Halo games is Valhalla. Um, if they can, uh, now I don't remember if Infected was a like a Forge map or was that was that Halo? Uh, yeah, that's been a that's been a mode in Halo for a long that's time. Right? Yeah, yeah. I wasn't someone making that. That was that, that was a Halo mode. So if they can bring Infected back, that'd be awesome. Again, I don't know if it's going to happen in season two, but I would love to see more game modes um, come back uh, as well as uh, if they can drop Valhalla, that'd be awesome. And, and Langel- Langelica, what do you think? More maps, more big team maps. Uh, again, if it's rehashing some old ones like Valhalla, and, you know, just more variety and playlists more playlists playlists is a very simple addition literally just custom games just do it from the get-go um i'd love to see some big team heavies um you know i would i if you i would also love multi-team i thought multi-team was a cool little uh game where you can go 3v3 and have a couple teams uh, go at it um just give more playlists uh, you know, infection. I know. I know a lot of people love infection, so I know that's probably pretty high on people's things. But I know co-op and forge are down the pipe, right? So it's not going to be a next season thing. So what can you do to kind of bring, you know, just more depth to the multiplayer, right? Because mm-hmm. multiplayer, there's just there's not. It's a lot of fun, but there's not too much there. You got to give us more, and playlist will go a long way. Yeah. So I apparently season two will be in May, which they think based on the current news, that's when co-op will drop with season two. So hopefully that is in the, the next season. Oh, okay. So, so, that's, that's so it technically, yeah, the season will start in May, which is apparently when big, when, when co-op will okay. be added to the game, uh, because that's like, that's a big new addition. But what I want to see in season two is give me at least three big team battle maps. I want to see, let's get Valhalla. Let's let, let's get Zanzibar and let's get one, one random classic one that you can add easily. Just take a look at the old map, add some additions, and you got it. Give me three big team battle maps, 
Let's get some old guns back in the game. Let's get, uh, let's for, for God's sake, bring the old shotgun back. Let's bring that thing back in this game. Um, I've been, I've been itching for that thing to return as much as a striker. A lot of people like, give me the old shotgun again. I, I really need it back in my life. I, and I love the grenade. I know a lot of people don't like it because it could be really good if you're, if you're nasty at it. I was one of those kids that was nasty at the grenade. So I love for the grenade to return, but vehicle wise, bring back the Falcon. The Falcon was one of the coolest vehicles. And that was from Halo Reach. That was that vehicle where you could like, you know, get two other people in turrets and you're driving it around like a helicopter. Bring that thing back. That thing was nasty and it was the most cooperative vehicle. And adding more cooperative vehicles is the best way to play Halo game. So bring that back. Bring back some of those old guns. And for God's sakes, like I said, add some big team battle maps. Give me three more of those. Add two more Slayer maps. And you've got a plethora of things to play on with game modes and obviously those things to be added in now to build on future ad additions one of the most debated questions before the game even released was the addition of a of a battle royale so people said halo can't function without a battle royale some people said we don't need no battle royale the question i have for you both is should halo have a battle royale and if it did how would you make it so i'll go with i'll go with Langella kill first here what what would you say about sure, for sure they have it, and then if you if you do, how would you make it? A lot of people, you know, talking about having battle royals. A lot of games have added the battle royale aspect. Um, I know it's pretty heavy in streams. Um, I don't think it's the be all end all for streams because if that was the case, why did Among Us have such a large stream audience? Why did Minecraft continue to have a long? Those are not battle royale games, right? So I'm not in the uh, audience that, hey, you know, you can't survive long term without a battle royale. Um, but if you're going to add a battle royale, it's it, I don't think it's too hard, right? You, you have an, you have a you have you know, the structure you have to have is again, a wide space, some different terrains, and you could do that on the Halo ring, right? It's pretty much getting dropped off on the Halo ring. I don't know what kind of characters you would use. I don't think you would be like you're going to be Spartans, I guess. And you're going to have, you know, the ring closing down around you type of thing. Um, so I'm not exactly, you know, I, I think it's doable. I think it's doable. I don't love it in the halo realm, to be honest. It just feels very unnatural. Um, but that's why I, I would set it up where, you know, you, you get shot off into a certain part of the ring. Um, and uh, you can have different terrains where, whether it's, you know, banished you know facilities you know like kind of those strongholds that you had different kinds of, of facilities in different areas um and you can make it the standard battle royale game um or battle royale aspect i think people would love it uh because they they eat up the battle royale stuff i'm not huge into battle royale but i understand the the, the love for it and I, I think it's doable i think it's doable um but i i don't i just it doesn't just doesn't feel natural mm-hmm so, so Aki, do you do you agree with that? Do you would you like to see it? Would you change anything that Frank kind of mentioned here or Lindell Kill said? Yeah, so um uh I I agree with Frank. Uh, I definitely agree with Frank on, on some aspects. Um I de I would like to see a battle royale though. I definitely would like to see a battle. I think they can pull it off. Like Frank said, you just the map that the campaign is on is is big. Yes, it's um you know doesn't have a ton of variety. Uh the terrain but you know they can change it i would uh you know you you drop in uh you, you either do solos duos triples or get crazy and do like you know five or a five or a seven team spartan squad like rolling through versus another you know seven people uh seven people teams you know um and i think i think fortnite might have done it where there were zombies in fortnite i think it would be cool to have um like computers either brutes or elite yeah, also yeah. in the map like and you can choose hey i want to i want to you know play the game on legendary or heroic where you're running into other spartans or you're running into you know brutes with hammers and i think that would be awesome you use the um the the armor lockers as as uh, you know you find the armor lockers you can find invisibility overshield um, you know, things drop out of the sky, like hammers, snipers. I think they would be able to pull it off. Um, 
use the fobs for vehicles. If you get another point, you'd make a point system somehow. Again, I don't know how you would do it, but um, you would call in vehicles, tanks, banshees, wasps. I mean, I think it's totally doable. I think it would be, if they figured out how to do it, I think it would be mayhem and I think it would be pretty fun. Like, oh, I, you know, yeah. Call yeah, I completely cool, agree. You know, like Call of Duty is like cool, but like if I was able to play a Battle Royale with Halo, that I think, and they, they did it good and they perfected it, I think it would be like one of the coolest things. Yeah, um, no, like, yeah. No, dude, I I I think of those two methods, and I, I I think that you either can use like sixty players and maybe use a big team battle map, and it would just be complete mayhem, right? But you can maybe use the, the campaign map, and you'll have a lot more people. But having some computers implemented, then that's you're doing something that other battle royales aren't doing, where you have like you're fighting against computers and you're fighting against people at the same time. Yeah, and I think cool. that you would you would have like this a very dynamic a dynamic battle royale that a lot of people really would not have seen around, and I think that that would be such a big deal. Um, for those that are saying that you like no, don't add it. Like, listen, I understand the component of saying that Hill doesn't need a battle royale to be successful, but having it's not going to make it like a bad thing. It just it, it honestly will bring people to play the game, and you'll see a more player count. Um, so that's that's kind of that one, and. I, I, I kind of want to move on to another question just because uh, I don't want to go too, too heavy here, but I, I want to jump to the progression. I want to jump to the progression system. I know that the most likely that this will probably get updated by the time the video gets, gets sent out because apparently the update is going to be changing the store to be cheaper and that you'll buy singular uh, you know, products and things like that. But if you were to fix progression in a way, what would you kind of, do to implement this change like what would you do to make this progression system at least manageable or, or just better in general so I'll, I'll go with hockey first and then we'll go to Langelico. so hockey what would you do to kind of fix this progression system yeah so um just first off i want levels like i you know i want you know i'm a level 15 and i'm a level 152 like i liked those i can see why they don't want to put a number to your name, I guess, you know, um, but I, I want levels. I think it's too late for that. Um, but the progression, at least they gave us more XP during each match. Now. Um, I think they definitely have some work and I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what I would do to, to fix the progression, but um, they definitely need to fix something. And yeah, the, the store in general, they need to either make things cheaper or they need to give you in-game currency to, to, you know, make your Spartan um, worthwhile putting new armors on or colors. They, they need to let you, uh, they need to free you essentially. They, they need to let you do what you want to do. Um, mm -hmm. And if we're talking about just the actual, this might be off topic. I don't know if it is, but ranked progression, like mm -hmm. how ranked works. If I play six games and I win four of them and I lose two of them, I should be a higher rank than when I started. And there yep. are multiple games we were playing last night. There are multiple game sets where I lose two out of six and I am at the same point where I was when I started playing ranked. And that is just not right. You know, yep. you get hard stuck and you get mad and then you're just like, well, <laughs> why even play ranked at that point? You know, there needs to be a clear cut way to rank up, rank down. Um, listen, if you, if you lose, but you do very good, cool. Maybe I don't lose, you know, all the points. Maybe I lose a little bit. If I win and, you know, maybe I didn't have the greatest game, I should still go up a little bit. You know, I shouldn't stay where I'm at. And if I win and I'm the top leaderboard, whether I'm holding the ball, whether I captured two flags, me and Frank were talking about last night. Um, if you play the objective, which if you're going to give me a ranked game, it's going to be objective and I play the objective, I better be going up and score, especially if I win and I'm the top leader in kills or if I'm not the top leader in kills and I, you know, hold held the ball for two minutes or captured two out of three flags. Like they need to fix the rank progression without a doubt. And so, uh, Angelica, what do you think? Yeah, hundred percent. I, um, and, and it kind of goes back to the progression matching up with the online play and setup. Um, if you just have team, objectives and that's what the rank is right you're not you're not choosing but you don't have a vote system you don't have a you know a playlist 
you have to tie progression into the games that you're playing. So if you're playing an objective game, um, you have to entice people to play the objective. Um, and, and there are some people who just go for kills because they know, hey, I got to get a good KD or, you know, is your KD nice? Um, instead of how much you held the ball for or how many times uh, you captured the flag. You know, like if you're playing – and kills and deaths are important. They're important in any game. But the guy who's capturing the flag and the guy who's holding the ball is playing the objective. Um, and those people need to get the higher points. Even on the losing team, they shouldn't go down the same as the guy who didn't play the objective. So there's got to be a better system than what they did. Um, I know everyone prays to the to the almighty KD, but if you're if you're not if you're not playing just Team Slayer, then you know you got to do a better job of that. And we like we talked about before, what I would do, you got to get it closer to reach. You're not going to get microtransactions out of this game. Um, I don't fully buy into that they're taking that out. I just think they're going to make it cheaper, which is a good step in the right direction. But I really wish that they would, even if it takes a lot of grinding to get points, give that option. Give that option. Like like Chris said, Haki, I love having numbers or military ranks, which was a really cool thing. I love the different symbols that came up uh, when you ranked up and stuff like that the battle pass rankings stink. I mean, they stink. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think we both touched on a lot of points. The biggest thing I'm going to say is earnable credits. It just solves every problem you have. Alle earning money by playing the game alleviates the, the, the bad feeling you have when you actually sit there and you purchase a good, right? And isn't that the, the, the goal of what 3 for 3 is trying to do with this microtransactions is buying more things off the shop, right? And, and by giving people, in, in essence, free money to go and buy goods off your shop gives it's it's the dave and busters mentality use dave and busters dollars it's the same thing give them incentive to buy more products right they're gonna buy it you, they're gonna say oh i have money in my pocket now i'm gonna go buy some stuff and just in case you got to add a little more credits to fill out the purchase they're gonna do it but that's the point by giving them incentive you're gonna buy more stuff by giving them zero incentive like you got to pay $20 to buy one color and one armor core, and it's all your money, not ours. No one's going to want to buy that except dumb, dumb people like me that will buy certain emblems that I like. But that's the point is that you're going to get more people angry of like, why am I buying an emblem in two colors for $15 where I could be buying this for like either no money or $3. Like I'm going to buy it on the $3 scale. Some people who are actually not, they're boycotting it or saying I'm not buying into anything. Until you change the prices, then change them and add earnable credits, then you'll be fine. Um, yeah. But now, and, and lastly, just before the last the last segment is colors, man. I, I mean, color just picking the colors of my Spartan, picking the colors of my emblem. Like I'm the I've been the Skull King for like my entire entire life. I kind of changed up the emblem on this game a little bit, uh, but my colors have been the same. Give me green, black, and white. That's all I'm looking for. When I can't find a color scheme that actually has that currently. It just bums me out. It bums me out. So add that component. It's simple. Colors, colors in your emblem, and put the armor armor pieces wherever you want. All right. And for, for God's sake, just add earnable credits. That's all I'm asking. Like just follow reaches and to a little extent where reached it, and you'll be fine. Um, so before we head out, I just wanted to give a floor to anybody. Any final thoughts before we close out the show? I'll I'll start with Haki first. Any final thoughts before we close out the show here? Uh, yeah. So again, it's uh, for me in in the general sense, it almost got into the nines, right? Um, this is not a closed game. It is an open game. It is a game that is being worked on. It is a game that's going to be added on. It is a great game. I haven't had this fun playing Halo since probably um, a co you know combined multiplayer and campaign, probably since Halo Three, Halo Four, Halo Reach. Those were very good games. I had a lot of fun, but. This one hit different with the open map. Uh, they did very good with the multiplayer. Again, problems with the BTB, but again, it's a open game. It is a game that's being worked on. So can it get into the nines? I think it can. If they do what they're supposed to be doing, um, you know, with Forge, with co-op especially, uh, especially um, if, you know, they add the playlists, if they add the maps, if they do everything that essentially they promised to do, then I think it can be a top tier game. Again, it might never touch Halo 2 or Halo 3, but 
I think it could be underneath those games. And I mean, right underneath those games. It's a great starting platform. Um, and I'm very excited that uh, it doesn't feel how bad Battlefield felt when it first came out. You know, it's not that bad, but it's it's something that can definitely be worked on and it can be way better, especially if they do uh, add mm-hmm. Battle Royale. I think if they figure that out and they give us everything that they promised to give us, uh, it can be a top tier game in the nines for me. So, like, uh, Langelica, what do you think? Again, eight point eight, eight point nine is not a bad score. It's a good game. Uh, I, I kind of gave you my criteria on what I think a good game is, and an eight point five is a good game. So it's above that. Um, I think this is three four three's best game with Halo. After Halo Five, I really questioned if three four three should give be given the reins for the Halo franchise. I was thinking maybe Microsoft should reconsider moving it to a different studio um, under their umbrella. Um, and I think 343 answered a lot of questions. I think they made some right changes in leadership and writing. Um, definitely room to improve, like we talked about throughout this show, but 343's best game. Um, and uh, it, it's definitely worth playing. And uh, you'll have a lot of fun playing it. Uh, there's flaws, like we talked about throughout the show. But I have fun with it. I still play it. And uh, I know Halo community has been dying for, for some hope with Halo. And uh, I think this this gives them some hope. Yeah. No. So, like, just to kind of close out here, I think this game. I love this game. I, it, but it's definitely not perfect. And I think the the biggest thing we mentioned so many different feedback that you can add, and I think that's the important thing. We're having a civil discussion about feedback. Like, we're not going after the studio. We're not going after the people that work on it. We understand that. Hey, you know, there's a lot of things you could fix here. And the positive thing that I've seen so far is that they are fixing things that are dire. Right. I know BTB should have been fixed right away, but they finally found out what the problem is and they're supposed to be dropping it this coming week. So thank goodness for that. But it shows you that they're, they understand that there's issues and that they're going to address them. And I think that's already a good step in the right direction. Once this game gets fixed to its entirety, I think it's definitely a contender for the game of the year. I think that is, it's in, it's in a battle. Like I, I could tell that's going to have a battle, especially if you look at all the rest of the games coming out this year, but it's, it should be in contention. It, and just that's because, some cycles. Some cycles it already classified, but you're talking about game awards where yeah. the cutoff is November. So they're in the they're kind of in the 2022 cycle. Yep. Yeah. So that's why, like, they would be going up against some top tier games, which yeah. we'll have a whole nother discussion on Round that table, one at another now. date. Yeah. Uh, but that that is that's another discussion for another day. But you know, I think that you know they have a lot of things to prove on, but they'll get there. And well, honestly, guys, that's gonna be it for us today. I feel like. Uh, this is this is a great discussion. A lot of things discussed. It's gonna be a long video, but hey, it it was a it was a fun one, and I think that's the important thing. But that's gonna be it for us, guys. If you like this video, please make sure you drop a like and please subscribe for more future content. Please make sure you drop that like. Helps us with the YouTube algorithm. Um, but until next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming signing off. Peace.